Welcome to another episode of the Marriage Mentor Podcast with Eric and Jolene Engel, where Eric and Jolene answer marriage questions for believers, looking at the root of the problem instead of the symptom, always while applying God's wisdom and word for a Christ-centered marriage. Thanks for coming back. Uh, This is the second half of this message. Uh, If you didn't hear the first half, uh, it should be just see the episode right before this one. So go ahead and check that one out, and then you can come back and listen to this one. Or if you already heard it, let's go. Okay, so number four. Help him. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't put submit to him here at le- number four. I don't know, because there's two. There are two out of the four. She is to love him, respect him. For the most part, we're okay. We're okay there. We we will say what is what exactly does respect look like? Right. Because we live in a right. society where respect is not common. Okay? Right. To say you should respect someone, yes, that that makes sense. We're we're, we're okay with those two. Love him and respect him. Okay. You know, we it, that has not insulted us yet. Right. Okay. But when it's when the word says to submit to him, we're like, uh, wait, what? Okay. And then the next one is number four help him. That one is just like, you gotta be kidding me. So I got to follow him and I just like clean up, you know, after him and (laughs) right. So they, they could be very, um, offensive ways to be that biblical wife, but they all work together beautifully to make that beautiful marriage. So in Genesis 2, 18, it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And what exactly does it mean to be your husband's helper? And I looked at that. I'm like, what does that mean? And I looked at that verse before you even came along. So we have that verse. We have Proverbs 31, 11 and 12. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. She, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and evil all the days of her life. And Proverbs 31, 27, she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So she's a bu- busy little bee. Um, oh, I guess I put, no. And then Titus 2, 5, to, were to be discreet, chaste homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. I put that in the wrong p- part. That should have been on submitting, okay? Because okay. it says be, being obedient to your own husbands. Yeah, imagine. Obey. Imagine. Obey. Imagine if I made that image and posted it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Or stuck it on Facebook. I could just hear the roars, the angry roars from the women that I'm like, and my first thought is like, I've been there. Well, because the mental picture is a guy standing over pointing at her saying, obey. Right. Okay. Right. Now, God doesn't treat us that way. He does not. And, and Jesus didn't treat us that way. I mean, so that obedience has to be as unto the Lord. And uh, well, and you have to come to terms with it. Either, either you believe God's word or you don't. Either you're going to follow God's word or you're not going to. And so often I hear women justify why they're not going to be obedient to God's word to do these things because their husband's not doing his stuff. That it's just like, whoa, whoa, you need to check your heart, girlfriend, because you, when you are done with your life here on earth, you stand before the Lord and you give an account of your life. And God's not going to say, oh, well, you know, Susie over here, yeah, you get a free pass from not respecting your husband and submitting to him and being his helper because he was a jerk to you. Right. It's, that's not how it works. So there's that side of why do I try and be a biblical wife? Well, because I have to give an account of my life when I'm done. And I'm not standing there with you saying, hey, go up to, go up to the Lord and defend, defend me to him to, to give all the reasons why I didn't want to follow him. I was going to ask you to do that for me. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> so you're not there to do that for me, but I wanted that biblical marriage because in my heart, I, I, I didn't know what it looked like, but there was this sense that it was beautiful. Well, and here's what I had to go off of. The picture of Christ in the church is beautiful. Then I'm like... Huh, I want that. Not sure how to get that. I'm not sure how it all works out. But in my heart and soul, there was something that God put in it that I believe it was the Holy Spirit who said, Come follow me and do these things. Okay? And now we're seeing that picture of this love that I never thought possible. 
but it came at a great cost. I had to lay down my pride. I had to say, huh, well, I don't like the verse, but God put it here. And okay, how, now what does that verse look like as I live it out? So one thing I have to do is say, I got to embrace God's word, but now how do I apply it? Okay, there's not abuse in our marriage. Okay, so we could take the abuse card off the table. And I'm going to assume that those who are still listening and, and watching this video, the abuse card is off the table. So how do you apply being a, a wife who follows? I had a wife who said to me one day, I don't know how to follow him because she had taken the lead all these years in the marriage. Right. And I said, ask him. Right. Okay. And it's simple. It's simple. And, and you and I had that conversation here. Do these two things, say these two things every single day. How can I help you today? Right. And then he, and then he says, whatever, or maybe he wants to go take the kids for ice cream. And, and this is simple. All you have to say is that's a great idea. Even if it's ice cream at that, four 30, right before dinner. That sounds like a great idea. Right. Okay. How can I help you today? And that sounds like a great idea. If you want to start rebuilding a relationship with your husband, just start with those two, those two lines right. every day. Right. And he's going to start looking at you going, who are you? Where did you, where did you come from? Where have you been all my life? Right. right? I, you know, and, and at that point when he starts trusting her, mm -hmm. then she moves into that trusted advisor, but she, she has to start there as to right. how can I help you today? And that sounds like a great idea. He's going to be like, it does. Hey, I'm feeling pretty good. Hey, this gal, my wife thinks that I have some good ideas, you know, and she wants to help me. I mean, he's automatically going to, to feel better and start treating you better just based on that. Right, right. So how are you your husband's helper? You have to ask him, how can I help you today? Because I don't, you know, your world might be you're working 40 hours a week. Okay. So, and so you're bringing up something because <laughs> it, it says discreet chaste homemakers. Yep. Okay. You might be working I, I'm, 40 hours I, a week. I, I'm, I'm going near that line that I'm getting ready to cross and I'm going near that can of worms that I'm about to open. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> so again, it goes back to what does the Bible say? She watches over the ways of her household. If I'm not in my household, how do I watch over it? That's how I looked at that verse. But I'm like, huh, okay. It's totally out of left field for me because I was the full blown career woman. Very, and you're very good at it. Too. Very content to do that, you know, to stay home and, and no, well, to stay uh, home. Look, this the <laughs> statement went like this, at least before you met me, is I'm not going to be baking any cookies for any man and wiping any snot nosed mm -mm. kids' no, nose, right? No, 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 to to be a homemaker was not on my to do list, never on my bucket list ever in a million years. Well, it's not even on your favorite list no, today. No, no. But it is on your obedience list. It is on my obedience list. I want to be obedient to what the Word of God says. So that's why I do what I do. Now, does that mean that you can't have people who come in and help you? Sure, you could have those things. The Proverbs 31 woman, she had servants. Now, you could say, well, I will, do, I will be my husband's helper when he hires me servants. Okay, because I hear all the objections. You probably do have the servants. It's probably called Maytag and... Um, Whirlpool, you know, your, your dishwasher and your, your laundry units and, and so forth. Those are helpers. You don't have to, we don't have to go down to the river and wash our clothes in the river or carry jugs from a well. Right. Well, and this job as being a homemaker, that is a job. Okay. It yes. is, it is a job. It is probably the most important job, more important than anything I do because you are, caregiver and uh, I don't know what I'm looking for, but you take care of the hearts in the home. I cultivate, I'm a heart cultivator. That's it. Yes. Cultivator. I cultivate the hearts in the home and I watch over my home and can a woman do that part-time? She can. Can a woman do that full-time? She can, but you can't not do it. Okay. okay? You can't not do it and get the results that you're looking okay. for. So what about, uh, and we addressed this before, but what about, you know, my wife works and I stay home. You're outside of the will of God and don't expect the Lord to bless your, what you're looking to do because he's not doing his role and she's not doing her role. Right. So if we were in that situation and we just heard this, then the, the next conversation would go with how do we, how do we re reverse it back? Well, but here's, here's even another part of that is that I feel personally that you are more capable of making more money than I. If we just went side by side out there in the workforce, <laughs> 
I'm sure you just beat me. <laughs> and like boy, a drum. there are days that I would just love to be in my office and right. Okay, you know. but God hasn't said, "Well, whoever's better at it." Right. Okay? Right. He set up these roles for a reason. And by the way, if you want to contact us or 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 disagree <laughs> with that, we're being very kind right now. My wife will be kind. I won't. I mean, I'll just blast you with the word of God because. He says it. Now, do I well, like, do I like what he let says? Let me step though? back on that, though. If somebody's going to argue with the word, what the Word of God says, we don't have a problem giving a defense. I understand. Okay. But, but if, the, if a couple is in a situation where they might be new Christians, they might be newly married, they, there could be so many things surrounding them as to why they made the choices that they made. And now they're like, oh, I want a biblical marriage. So how do I get it back? Okay. So here's what you're addressing. Okay, there are those who just don't have the knowledge or understanding. Right. Okay. We've we've not, had couples look, like that. I'm not talking to those people. Right. Okay. It's the ones with the rebellious heart that says, "I know what God's word says, and I ain't doing it." Right. Okay? And and let's address those that might have a well, hard time with and, the faith side of it because right. they're having to give up an income. Right. And they love their job, and I'm like, yeah, I, I understand that. I mean. I would love. I would have loved to have gone off to the office during those years that I'm raising up the boys instead of like, oh man, just dealing with all their stuff. But today they're 16 and 17, and it's just like I I love the relationship that I have with them. You know, making the choice to have a beautiful relationship with them over a big bank account and nice cars. I'd love to have a new car. My car's 14 years old. Okay, I and I love all that, but in spite of all that. If God's word says it, do it. That's it, you know? Right. And, and as I look at Jesus, uh, when people didn't understand, Jesus was very caring and kind to them and explaining that. When they were rebellious, like the Pharisees, he didn't pull any punches. No, okay? he so, tables. <laughs> so you need to examine your heart and right. figure out which is it. Am I rebellious or have I just not understood this or I had a problem with trusting the Lord in this. That's that's different than just, I know what it says and I ain't doing it. Right, right. So if that's where you're at right now, you're outside of the home and your heart should, the Holy Spirit should be tugging you back to the home because there needs to be domestic support. Okay. And in our culture today, if a young woman who went to college has all this debt and now she's like, I got to pay off this debt. I have to have this career, but she fell in love. She got married and now the kids come in. It's just like, what am I going to do? So there's this financial pressure. How many times have we seen that scenario play out? Oh, I mean, often I, I'd, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times where we're talking to the gal and saying, look, you're going to incur all this debt. No, no, I'm going to get my career first. And inevitably she finds that guy and all of a sudden that career stuff isn't important to her anymore, but yet the debt is still there. The debt's still there. But that's another that's another topic. Try and get out of debt as fast as you can. We have a couple that we did their premarital and she had the school debt. And we're talking to them about, okay, so what happens when you have kids? Do you want to stay home? Financially, they can't stay home today because of her debt and he doesn't make enough. And so I'm like, you have some decisions to make. And so they're now moving in the right direction to undo the debt, get out of debt as fast as they can. So he could be the main provider. And so they could have kids and she could be there to raise them up. But I'm not willing to give up my standard of lifestyle. I, I want the fancy. And, and they need to talk to the Lord about that because we are addressing biblical issues because the reality is you cannot have, you can't have everything. Well, you have to make a choice. And it's not about balance. Well, and I'm not talking about you have to be poor either. I like the stuff, okay? <laughs> I, do I like the nice cars. I love a nice house. And I like eating $50 steaks if I can afford them, okay? That's, okay? Yes. I, I love that stuff. Right, right. But things have to be in priority. Yes, it's about priorities. It's not about balance. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy where he says, it's all about balance. You could have it all. And it's just like, you can't have it all. Something's going to suffer. And what generally suffers is the marriage. And when the marriage starts to suffer, oh, well, we have a communication problem now. Okay, now they're lacking emotional intimacy. They're lacking physical intimacy. Now they're at odds. They're fighting all the time. And then they have a platonic marriage where they're co-parenting, they're just roommates. There's no love there. They're just putting on the brave face, maybe going to church for the sake of the kids because they went outside of God's will. 
Right. And it's just like, come back. If you've gone outside of it because you didn't know or you were rebellious, that's the beauty of the gospel. It's a message of grace. Come back. They're, the scriptures are designed to give us instructions for life. Okay. And every... I know that there are women all over the world watching this, listening to this from different stages and seasons. Some of them can be those and young, different, different cultures. Yeah, different well. cultures. They could be the brand new, married. They don't have a lot of obligation. They don't have kids, but somebody still has to do the laundry. Somebody still has to do the grocery shopping and so forth. That it's just like, will you still be a kind wife after you've worked forty hours and you come home and then you take care of all this stuff? Because she's going to be more responsible in the home than probably he is. Well, I mean, God's made guys stronger for a reason. Right. Okay? So we can get knocked down and get back up and, and kind of be okay. Okay? You're not built that way. Why? I need more sleep. Why would I expect <laughs> you to go out and be the man or to I, act like a man? I understand. Okay? And, and husbands, now we're talking, I'm talking to husbands. If you expect your wife to do that, stop it. Man up, suck it up. And take that responsibility from her because God's given that responsibility to you, not to her. Well, and she can be that helper where she brings in the finances, but domestic support still needs to take place. And there are still clear commands in scriptures that she is to be the manager of that home. Right. So that might mean you cut down your hours. That might mean that she only works 20 hours a week so she could still tend to the home. Or she works 30 hours a week and they hire someone to come in and do some of that other stuff. There are create, sure. some creative ways hire to help out. Hire someone to clean the toilet so you can tend to the relationship. Yes. Okay? Don't, yes, but to, don't forsake the relationship for cleaning the toilets. Well, and and for a woman to expect that she could do it all and be kind in the process, I haven't met that woman. What do you mean? It's on TV. <laughs> you know, you know, so if you got, if you're married to a man who, who's, he's forcing you to work, I'd have a conversation with him. Okay. okay. Totally have a conversation with, with him on that. Those worms it, are all over the place right it, now. The, the worms are all over the place, but it's not my issue. This is what God has called me to do in the sense of ministry is to bring God's word and to let the Holy Spirit do the convicting. Okay. So uh, one last thing I want to say is if you can do it, Okay. <laughs> Really, if you can do it, any gal out there can do it because you are not a passive personality. Really? You're, yeah. <laughs> you're not a passive personality. You're not the gal that, that automatically is bent towards Susie Homemaker. No. None of that stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that anytime you're in the kitchen, you hate it. Oh, I hate, I hate being in the kitchen. You don't, you don't, I would, you don't tell me, I, here's your slop I, that I made for you. But, <laughs> I but, would rather clean toilets and do laundry than be in the kitchen. I understand. But yet you do it as unto the Lord. Absolutely. Because I, that is the role that I've decided to embrace because every woman has that choice to say either I'm going to be a biblical woman or not. And Again, I'm a couple decades in where I've seen the fruit of that obedience. Well, I mean, but you've even forsaken uh, adoration from people for that role because based on the platform you have, you've been asked to speak and go around the world right. and you won't do it. Why? Because it's, I don't want to leave my post. This is, these are my roles. And as my kids get older, sure, it's freeing up my time to do more um, outside ministry. But my first ministry is you and, and my sons and being in the home. And until I could... But wouldn't that, isn't that your calling? I'm, I'm, and I'm baiting you here. Isn't that your calling to go out and, and, and tell the world? And, and I tell the world based on how my marriage is. Okay, because if I seek to bring God glory by the way I am as a wife, that is me telling the world. Now, what's happened is just those in our own personal life will see the marriage and they're like, how do you get a marriage like that? Well, you got to be a wife like that. Okay. Right. And like that. <laughs> and, and as the Lord has prompted me to write and so forth, I always would have to stand back and say, okay, can I manage all this? Now you, you think I wear a cape, and I don't wear a cape. I don't have the energy. You don't need a cape. Well, I, hey, if you watched the last episode, you saw the green drink there. I mean, I, that has to soup. It's like 
my battery. It's got to charge my battery because normally every afternoon I'm probably napping because it's just, there's so much, there's so much that I manage. And so as my kids have gotten older, it's like, okay, now I have a little bit more um, free time to do a little bit more outside ministry. But when the kids were little, there would have been no way I would have taken on something like this. And God didn't ask me to back right. then. You know, my, my first calling is to be God's daughter. Well, and even now, even now, if there are podcasts or publications or something that need to go out, but your, your family would suffer, then guess what? Those publications don't go out. So by the way, if, if you've been, (laughs) if you've seen a dry spell in podcasts or articles or whatever, it's because my wife tends to her first godly obligations uh, and obedience. Well, first. and and we've talked about this. We've come across um, some women in ministry who are big names, and I'm not going to mention them. That not by name. No, um, they did their, the best they could to be godly women. Um, but we've seen marriages falling apart. Yes. Marriages falling apart because they're pursuing the the ministry, right? right? And that's I don't see that in scripture. So it's, you, it's show me, you show me well, that in Scripture. This, because this is the first ministry. Right. Okay? Right. Uh, first, first it was God walking with Adam. Okay? Right. The relationship, Your relationship there. And then he created marriage. That's the second ministry mm-hmm. there. Okay? Right. First, first part of ministry is being in sync with the Lord. And then second is being in sync with your spouse. Okay. Then comes your family, and then comes outside I refer ministry. to it as inside ministry and outside ministry. Okay, so I do inside Ooh. ministry. I don't know if I've ever heard that term, inside ministry. Yeah, I mean, it's probably because I've written, I've written more on it. So I do inside ministry, which is um, obviously I'm not necessarily talking about my relationship with the Lord because I don't see that as ministry. I just see that as well, it ministers to you. It ministers to me. Right. So as I spend time with the Lord, He fills me up, so then I could minister to you, and then I could minister to my sons. And, oh, so now there's a little bit left over and I'm still managing the home. And, all right, maybe I could write that, that article. Right. Um, but to go just pursue outside ministry because there's a platform there, at what cost? So, so here's what I want to say to the gals since we're talking about the gals' roles, that you can be a hero in your own home and no one will ever know it, but you'll get the rewards when you go to heaven. Oh, right. hands down. You know, and whether you're... In the home, full time, uh, work is unto the Lord. If you're in the home part time because you're working full time and you're exhausted and you know your marriage isn't right, you know you want to get back to having that strong marriage because what would be the point of pursuing the the career, the cars, the homes when if the you're, marriage falls apart? When the marriage falls apart, who do you have to share it with? Because that's not the legacy. You don't want to have a legacy of fine cars. And, and maybe it's not fine cars. Maybe in your mind it's just like we're just trying to make ends meet. Okay? That God will meet those ends. He will. I don't because, know how he does. He, because we've been there. We, we've uh, been there below the poverty level. Below the poverty level for a good three years. At, at one point I lost 95% of my income. And our big night out was $8.00. For the whole family buying burritos and waters. Right. I mean, that was, it was every Sunday. That was because the, that's how you gave me that break that on that Sunday. That was the big feast is two dollar burritos for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Which is I mean, you can spend eight dollars right now on a meal for yourself or more. Well, and my that was, my grocery budget was a hundred dollars a week. And I had to figure out how I created twenty meals because Sunday was our we go get burritos. Right. So it, it is possible. But, it but is the, a, po- the point I'm making is that people told you, well, you should go get a job. I heard it all the time. You I heard it from job. people in the and church, what, people in the family. And what did you say to them? I already have a job. <laughs> then I'm like, what do you mean I should go get a job? I already have a job. And so that role of a wife is so discounted. But what women don't realize is you're like that, that strong glue that binds the, the marriage and family together. And, and that doesn't mean that if your kids are grown that you can't be working, okay, because you have more of that time. But when you've got those littles in the house, you've got newborns and infants, I mean, you're, you're barely surviving those, right. those stages. And as they get older, some parents will put their kids in public school, which frees up the mom to maybe have that part-time job. But bottom line is 
God's word calls you the helper to him and to be the keeper of the home. Well, and I know that's a full-time job because there are times I'd come home from the office and without saying a word, as I walked in the front door, you'd hand me the the boy and you'd walk out the front door. Oh yeah, and I didn't know how to handle it. I was like, this role was going to destroy me. That's how I viewed it. Then I'm like, it has sucked the life out of me and then some. Well, but it's a full-time job. It is a full-time job. it's the most important job because you're shaping lives. Right. Well, but again, it goes back to what is the role of a wife? And she's called to be her husband's helper. And it's not a demeaning role. You don't stump all over me, wipe your feet on me as if I'm some doormat. So it's just simply, how can I help you today? And if you're both working, it might be you sit down at the end of the week. It's a Sunday night and you pull out a little journal. What do you need for me this week? Okay. And you might rattle off these things. And I look at my schedule and I think, wow, that's overwhelming. I can't do it all. Okay, so, and I've done that with you. I, I've mm-hmm. done that with you, and, I, and I've said, I, I can't manage all this. What, what's your top? What's your top three? Okay, and then you would tell me your top three, and I'm like, okay, I could do that. So it alleviated a lot of pressure, because sometimes we come in, especially as a new bride, or when you're bringing in kids now, and as the seasons change in your marriage, sometimes we put more on ourselves than what you're putting on us. What the husband is putting oh, on the wife. Right, because you as a female have more sense, you have a bigger sense of responsibility anyway. Yeah, now if you're married to a husband who's very controlling and he's very demanding, then you have that conversation and say, I can't do all this. You know, what, what can we take off this list? Right. So those are little tidbits of how you could help him just by a simple question. How can I help you today? And that sounds like a great idea in how to follow him. Those are two main areas for a biblical wife that we trip over all the time because of Satan, because he comes and deceives us, and because of society. So it's an act of the will to be obedient to what God's word says, and then you get the blessing. So that's all for now. We're going to talk about mutual, because we addressed your four things as a husband. We've addressed the four things of a wife. And in the next episode, we will discuss what we do mutually as a couple. So good episode. That's all for now. I'm Jolene Engel at JoleneEngel.com. You can find me at EricAndJolene.com.